What's going on YouTube? Thanks for stopping by. My name is Michael, also known as Hyrule Dude. Today we're going to be going over part 15 of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and we're going to be taking control of Divine Beast Von Meadow. So we're at the flight range like we left off in the last video. We're here talking to Tiba. He's going to give us some bomb arrows to help us access the Divine Beast because the beast is going to be covered in a like force field that we need to get through. Um, we're going to need warm clothes, which we already have. We're actually wearing the Snow Quill armor set. So uh, he's going to ask me why we're actually risking our life to bring down Meadow. And I'm just going to say just because, man, because you know what? That's my business. So <laughs> he's pretty shocked by that response, thinking that I'm basically a nutcase. But that's all right. So let's go ahead and hop on his back and we're going to head up to the Divine Beast now. So we're going to have to shoot those cannons on each corner of the beast. Uh, there's going to be four in total. So let's go ahead and get prepared really quick. I'm going to switch over to my falcon bow uh, just because it shoots a lot farther than the boko bow that I had before. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so basically I just like to just drop down pretty low close to the cannons. I used to kind of go a lot higher and, and kind of shoot down, but it's so much easier this way. Tiba's over here flying like a maniac. What the heck? Alright, so this cannon has definitely got me in his radar, so gotta do some maneuvering here and take him out. Got him. All right, so on to the next one here. All right, so I'm going for the last cannon. Okay, so this dude couldn't see me for a little bit. I think the snow like camouflaged me, which is pretty cool. Even though he did lock onto me when I was hitting him with the arrows. But that's all right, it was too late at that point. See ya. All right, so now we're gonna go into the Divine Beast. Look at this monster. Well done, Link. That thing is history. That's what I don't get. He was just flying perfectly fine and now suddenly he's like injured. I mean, it does look pretty bad, though. Bad news, Link. It looks like I got hit pretty good back there. I think... I think I need to get back to the flight range. I just hope that I can make it back. Sounds like you're chickening out, man. No offense. No pun intended. <laughs> it's all you. All right, see you, Tiva. I'll catch you later, man. All right, headed into the butt of the beast at this point.
Well now, I've seen that face before. I had a feeling you would show up eventually, but making me wait a hundred years is a bit indulgent. You're here to wrest control of Meadow away from Ganon, correct? If so, then the first thing you'll want to do is find yourself a map. Alright, tell me where the map is, brother. That guidance stone has the information for the layout of this divine beast. Can you make it there? I sure can. So that's going to be the first guidance stone we're obviously going to go to. Before we do that, there's a treasure chest right here behind us. Um, we're just going to have to take out this glowing eyeball and collect the contents. So there's going to be a total of seven chests in this divine beast that we're going to go ahead and get. Uh, this is going to be the first of seven. Gonna take this glowing eyeball out right here, clear out this malice and we're gonna take advantage of that updraft right there. So basically, we're going to glide over to this ladder because there's a treasure chest up here, and it's gonna help us be able to just glide over to the corridor on the other side. Nice ancient core, pretty cool. Craft some ancient arrows with that. Alright, we've got this Guardian Scout. He's not too strong, so I'm just going to take him out really quick. Alright, so let's activate this Guiding Stone and get the map and control of the Divine Beast. All right, sweet. So this Divine Beast has three increments that we can move it in, um, similar to the other Divine Beasts as well. This is my favorite Divine Beast of them all, actually. You'll need to look closely at your map of the Divine Beast. The terminals that will activate Meadow are marked by those glowing points. You'll need to activate all of the terminals to take back control. Think you're up to it. Yes, sir. I am totally up to it. So there's going to be a total of five terminals that we need to activate. So let's run down this corridor. There's going to be a treasure chest right here to the right. So we'll go ahead and just hop down really quick and grab this. And there's another one at the bottom of this room. This divine beast is just packed with treasure chests all over the place. So got some bomb arrows. All right, sweet. So from this angle, we can easily hit this glowing eyeball. So let's go ahead and hit that really quick. All right, we'll get that chest. And it's just an ancient shaft. I really wish they would make the items that you get in these chests inside of a divine beast like super awesome. They should be amazing, in my opinion. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful, right, for whatever they give us, but still, it would be so cool. All right, so let's take this updraft up. We're going to go back to the ladder that we originally went up when we first entered the beast. But this time, we're going to look to the left, and we're going to see this eyeball here. Let's go ahead and hit that so we can enter this room or this side of the beast. All right, take this dude out here. That's going to reveal the terminal and allow us to gain access to that. So all we have to do is we're going to have to reposition the beast. So let's put it at the highest increment so we can get a nice angle to glide from. There are 
four terminals remaining. Still a ways to go. Alrighty. Okay, so there's that treasure chest up there. It's really easy to get to. We're just gonna walk up this ramp and paraglide from this corner right here. This chest has something really good, so it's definitely worth getting. Knight's Claymore, sweet. All right, so jumping down to the bottom, if we look through this glass here, you'll see there's a rock wall over there. And then we'll go to the other side of the window, and also there's like a rock formation here. So let's throw a round bomb down the pipe and blow that up and get that out the way. All right, so that thing is obliterated. Now we're going to hit this crystal so that we can get the wind stream coming in. Now we're gonna throw a round bomb in there and it's gonna blow the round bomb to the other rock wall. And we're gonna go ahead and detonate that right now. Boom, all right, sweet. So, perfect. Let me run back over to that side. I'm gonna go ahead and reposition the beast, positioning it to the lowest increment and take out my magnesis so that we can grab this metal boulder that's about to slide out. Sweet, so let me grab this, bring it right over here, and drop it right here. All right, cool. So, all right, gonna reposition this beast again, putting it back into the highest position. And we're gonna let this metal boulder hit that orange switch down there to open the gate. That's how it's done. So let's go ahead and enter and we're going to get our next terminal. I think there's going to be three after this. There are three terminals remaining. Keep going. That was very encouraging, Ravali. Thank you. I will continue, sir. Let's run back to the previous room and there's going to be this window open here with the wind stream. If you look down, you're going to see a, an eyeball there. So go ahead and take him out. And let's paraglide to this platform. If we look behind us, there's going to be another glowing eyeball. So that's going to let us kind of just go right through the beast through the central room. But before we do that, let's turn around and we're gonna see that there is a room down there. So let's paraglide over and get this terminal as well. Alright, sweet. Only two left. So, repositioning the beast again back to the lowest increment. That's all it is with this divine beast. It's just all the way to the highest increment or all the way to the lowest increment. It's like they ran out of ideas. They're like, well, you just go into two positions on this divine beast. But it's cool. I like it. I like it because you could do this. Like, I'm about to paraglide right through the divine beast. So, like, check this out. I'm just going to paraglide through. We're not even going to touch the ground, man, until we're on the other side. right through that's how we do it so cool um there's actually another terminal heading down here but there's a, an eyeball in the way so let's go ahead and take him out i'm going to use my falcon bow because he's pretty far away all right
Almost didn't make that one. Almost didn't make it, man. Alright, so let's get this gate open. We're going to activate this stone here. Just one terminal remaining. <laughs> what do you know? Alright, you heard the man. We're on our last terminal. Let's run into this room. Look at the ceiling. Another eyeball waiting to destroy you. So we're going to take him out. Get this skull guy out of here. There's two of them. And there's a treasure chest that actually got dropped when the eyeball was hit. But this one like slid all the way back here. So let me grab that real quick. Alright, got some ice arrows. So let's go ahead and hit this crystal. It's going to open the windows and this battering ram is going to slide all the way downhill in this room. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the beast to the highest increment. And then we're going to take out our magnesis and get hold of this fan right here. And you'll see the battering ram is going to slide back to the other side of the room. It's going to hit the switch, opening this gate. And this is our final terminal. Now we're going to be ready to go against the boss. That was the last terminal. Now you just need to start the main control unit. I want you to take a good look at your map. There should be a new glowing point on there. Well, flap to it. Final treasure chest. This is going to be the seventh one in the Divine Beast. So we're going to actually just walk all the way up to this highest window right here. And if we just basically jump off, we can paraglide to the platform with this treasure chest. Very nice. So we got the knight's bow in this chest. And now the only thing left to do is really to just activate the main control unit. From here, we could easily access the central room. But before we do that, let's go ahead and put the Divine Beast Meadow in the center increment. And then we'll go ahead and access the main control unit to get to Thunderblade Ganon. Alright, gonna hop on down. Now, in this fight, I use a lot of bomb arrows because it makes it super simple to take Ganon down. So... Let's go ahead and activate this main control unit and get this party started. All right, activating the main control unit. So we've got Wind Blight Ganon here, he's ready to do some battle, and he's not too hard to beat. There's a few different methods that you can use. I particularly, I personally like to use Bomb Arrows on Thunder Blight Ganon. Uh, I find it to be very effective, and there's a technique that I use that you could really take him down in a matter of like basically three minutes. So it's a really solid battle strategy. years ago, but only because I was winging it. Saying this, but you must avenge me, Link. Alright, so I'm going to run to the nearest updraft that I see. I'm going to take out my paraglider and I'm going to go ahead and use the slow motion to just throw some bomb arrows. Now, he has this like tornado attack thing where you could just pretty much just get out of the way and avoid it, and he should be pretty safe. Um, then he takes out his weapon and he can shoot these lasers at you. So, again, I'm going to use the updraft to take him out. 
He's going to fall to the ground and I'm going to continue just unloading these bomb arrows on him. Alright, perfect. So, my stamina is out, obviously, here, so I'm just going to continue hitting him from afar. And now we're going to enter into phase two of the battle. Nothing to worry about. It's going to be relatively the same exact strategy that we've been doing, and we're just going to keep at it. Alright, he's almost done. I think, what, maybe two more arrows from here? Alright, I'm just gonna run away from these tornadoes. Find the nearest updraft. And let's finish this dude. Done. Alright, sweet, and if you've seen my videos before, I think this is the most aesthetically pleasing thing in the game. It's the heart containers. I think it's just so perfect. Just look at that thing. Alright, let's go ahead and grab this heart container here. Yes, let's go ahead and activate that and that's actually going to activate a cutscene. Well, I'll be plucked. You defeated him, eh? Who would have thought? Well done. I suppose I should thank you now that my spirit is free. This returns Meadow back to its rightful owner. <laughs> Don't preen yourself just for doing your job. I do suppose you've proven your value as a warrior. A warrior worthy of my unique ability. The sacred skill that I have dubbed Ravali's Gale! It's now time to move on and start making preparations for Meadow Strike on Ganon. But only if you think you'll still need my help while you're fighting inside Hyrule Castle. Feel free to thank me now. 
Or never mind, just go. Your job is far from finished, you know. The princess has been waiting an awful long time. Sights are now set. You'll have a precise speed on Ganon from this vantage point. And when the time is right, give him everything you've got. Now we wait for that perfect moment. <laughs> Meadow, we've been artfully patient for the last 100 years. I doubt you'll suffer a feather over a few more moments. After all these years, I simply must admit the truth. Even without the power of flight, Link made his way to this divine beast and accomplished something that even I could not. I guess I was wrong about how lucky he would be. I hope that luck... Ravali <laughs> says I'm lucky, that's funny. Sake. No, it's skill, my man. It is complete, total skill. All right, so back at Rito Village, and we have officially received Rivali's Gale. It's truly the best special power that you get in the game, and that's just my opinion, uh, but that's also why this is my favorite Divine Beast. So let's go ahead and talk to Kennelly here in the village and let him know that we've taken care of Vameto. And of course, Kennelly wants to reward me for the work I've done, and he's going to give me a great falcon bow, which is an amazing bow, and you can actually get it repaired from Hearth in Rito Village. You can also obtain new ones here as well, so uh, just keep that in mind. And let's go ahead and open this chest. Very, very cool, I love this bow. So that's going to wrap up this video, YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I love you all. May God bless each and every one of you. And I really hope to see you on the next video. Please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Cheers.